cold and uncomfortable outside. If we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First of all, we have uh, the public comment period. Mr. Preston, how are you tonight? Good, how are you? Just fine. Just a quick update on the beach parking meters, the state of New Hampshire. I reported there they would go up April 1st, but this past Thursday there was a meeting here at the HPAC. They're having some kind of a snafu with the uh, parking meter kiosk there, the pay, whatever you want to call them. And they're out of service until Marathon Monday. Hmm. So parking is still free at the beach until two weeks from today. So just remember Marathon Monday is the first day that you have to pay. Thank Charlie, you. what what about that meeting uh, that they're going to have there? Is it May 18th? I don't have that information with them. You're right, though. There's a spring meeting that's coming up. So I'll see if I can find out. I'll let you know next week. Yeah. I have it written down at home. I thought maybe you might remember. I wrote it down, too. But anyway, so you, everybody can park free at the meters till Marathon Monday. Thank you. Very good. Anybody else from the audience? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board for the announcements and community calendar. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I received an email the other day uh, from John Nine. The Board of Directors of Experience Hampton is having their first annual meeting this Wednesday at 6 p.m. at the Old Salt Goody Colvum. So I'm going to try to make it after work. If anyone wants to stop by, see what they have planned for the year, it should be a good time. Okay, Jim? Yeah, I, as Charlie said about the uh, kiosks, I'm sure that breaks everybody's heart that they don't have to pay to park. It's a, but also, I'd like to say that Channel 22, the local cable access channel, uh, they have a community corner program where nonprofits or different pro, uh, yeah. groups in town can come in and sort of tell what they're about or if they're having a fundraiser, <coughs> if they're looking for help, if they're looking for uh, to give information about their organization. Any nonprofit can do that. There's a, a slide on the website that's talking about that. It gives the information of who they should get in touch with. So. Uh, Take advantage of it. The, the groups out there in town should take advantage of that to get their message out to the town. Okay. Mr. Bean? Uh, nothing, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Griffin? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that meeting that's going to be uh, held down at the stage area at the beach is May 19th, and it's going to be at 530, and people will get a chance to ask questions, make comments about things to do with what's happening down at the beach. I have two things. One, the uh, Hampton Parks and Recs is doing a travel show Wednesday, April 13th at 6 p.m. I know they have a couple of trips uh, planned for this year, uh, with this being the 100th anniversary of our national parks. They have a Canyon Country Adventure trip, and they also have a Yosemite National Park in winter. Um, so those two trips are up, so if you'd like more information on those. Travel show is Wednesday, April 13th at 6 p.m. You know, also, the other thing is I'd like to send uh, our condolences to uh, our Deputy Police Chief Hobbs in the passing of his father. Another thing um, is there's a 2 o'clock uh, meeting at the Hampton Historical Society this Sunday. There's a, uh, do you remember what it's about? No, I think but it's, I, I got a notice on it, so. I want to say it's, um, uh, things to do with the Isles of Shoals. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It is. And it's going to be uh, a lot. It sounds really good. I know I was looking at it thinking, I hope I can make it. So it's always nice over there at uh, the Tech good Museum. Good programs. Very good. Next thing we have is our consent calendar. <laughs> First thing we have on there is the 2016 veterans requalifications. We have 2016 new veterans. We have 2016 new veteran spouse, 2016 elderly requalifications, 2016 new elderly. We have a permission from the New Hampshire Artworks for display, for art displays in the town office. We have a entertainment license and a posted permit for the Ashworth by the Sea. We have a hawkers and peddlers license for Jennifer Eaton for the concession stand at Tuck Field. 
And we have committee appointments. To the Recreation Council, Recreation Advisory Council, we have Jill Goslin, Charlene McDonald, and Skip Webb as the alternate. To the Cable Committee, we have Paul Parkett, Brad Jett, and Brian McCain. Lease Land Commission, we have Uda Pinio. Mosquito Control, we have Richard Rainier. Conservation Commission, we have Diane Shaw, Pete Tilton, Patrick Swank. And the last one is number 10 is the Hampton Town Clock Intermunicipal Agreement. Do I have a motion? I move the uh, consent calendar. Motion second. second. Seconded by Rick. All those in favor? Unanimous. The next thing we have is appointments. The first one is supposed to be Chief Sawyer, but he's uh, due to circumstances beyond his control. He cannot make it tonight. So the next one will be Ed Tinker. 2015 abatements. Good evening. Good evening. Sorry, I was a few minutes late. Um, right on time. Three items tonight. The first being uh, five more abatements for 2015. Um, the total of those five, excuse me, equals 20. A refund, uh, they're all uh, recommended for refund. Total is $22,077.49. Um, just to let you know, uh, abatement number 21 is <coughs> usually a um, prorated abatement based on a fire that took place on October 8th um, down at the beach, down at 101 Ocean Boulevard. Have any questions regarding any of those? But seeing none, we can continue. That's that. You want to? You want to? You need a vote. So moved. So we have a motion by second. Being seconded by Mr. Griffin. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Um, second item is uh, the utility appraisal contract for 2016. That has been uh, reviewed by both uh, council. And by the state, um, their um, their review was finalized a few days ago. They're fine with it. Um, the town is also, or the attorney is also fine with it. If you have any questions on that, I can answer those. Any questions? And I just have a question with with all the foolishness that's going on with the state. Yes. What, what kind of chance do we have with these now? I mean, are, are they, are they, in effect, going to put us right out of any of these assessments? I don't, I don't think for this year or for the near future we have any worries about these values being implemented and defended. I think things may change down the road. It appears, um, it, but it's kind of not totally clear where the state's going, but there are some indications that utility values assessments may change or be <clears throat> more controlled out of our hands directly or portions of. Um, so that's things that are happening now that we're looking at. But right now it's probably better that we stay on top of it. Well, I think, I think one big thing, which is really good that we were able to get this approved, is that if some of the things that the state are, is looking to do as to um, qualified or, or approved work under certain standards of use path, we wouldn't be able to do these in-house. If that, if that change in the language gets approved or passes, um, yeah, it would pretty much take, take the ability to do special use appraisals in-house it's going to be impossible to do without having a use pap compliant report done which would require a, a licensed appraiser to do not a not an assessor that's licensed in a different way so that's this is a good thing um, if, if that law was in today we, we probably would have had no choice but to go this way and i think this is the way to go Okay, so it'll help us in the future. It'll keep us up to date. It'll keep us on the on the court cases and stuff if we need to defend ourselves. That yeah, in to much have better the shape ahead of time would really help with not only uh, supporting values but defending them if if that comes up. Yeah, it's it's also uh, good to note that uh, 
some of these utilities are not pole utilities. Okay, gas and uh, water. They they would not be affected by these uh, this legislation that we're. Well, the the pole and conduit legislation, but we're talking use back standard one and two. That would be relative to all utility. Okay. Okay, but with it, you know, I'm just saying that, that, that we're staying ahead of the game, we're staying up with the game, we're staying so we go and we testify about this stuff. Obviously, you do, and Mark does, that we know what we're talking about, that we get evidence that we can present and, exactly. and push for it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you. So, just to let you know, these this, this appraisal contract is relative to all the utilities, but not of Seabrook. That, that's a separate appraisal. So, this includes six utilities or five utilities plus Fairpoint communication which again has the you know the poll situation that we're talking about any other questions vote on this case yes sir okay so I have a make a motion make a motion second. Jim makes a motion seconded by Regina to accept the utility appraisal contract all in favor yeah. unanimous um, before we get into the last item I just wanted to give the board an update um, as to the revaluation, just to, just some information. Beginning tomorrow, we're going to start um, reviewing commercial property. It'll be a slow process to start, but the vision will be here, and we'll begin putting together the materials and uh, start the field review for commercial. Um, on April 13th, we're going to begin the residential review. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that. And we're hoping to have completed review completed by the middle of May at the latest of all properties so that we can then, then build values and notify property owners during probably July of their new values. So we'll have hearings prior to the end of the summer season so all property owners will have the ability to, to make an appointment if they'd like. So I just wanted to let you know that tomorrow we'll be starting to get actively out there and doing field review. Um, the last item we have is. Can I, in, can I just? Yep. I'm sorry. And just for the public, just so they know, when, when will these. I mean, they'll have the a chance to appeal, but when do the new values go into the tax bill? When would they start showing up? The, the winter, the second tax bill of 16, will be the new values, which are relative to April 1st, 2016. Okay. First tax bill, though, will be as <coughs> normal uh, one half of the prior years based on the prior year's tax rate. Thank you. Okay. Um, Any other questions? Okay. okay. The, the last item we have, and then Mark's here to, to assist me with this, we received a notice of intent to cut for the property at 298 Exeter Road. That's map and lot 67-1. That's the property, um, I believe, that, that has a conservation easement. Yes. That requires that area of land to stay in its current state so normally current use, you could cut trees down, but in this regard, this, this can't be touched. It specifically it's states that it can't be uh, changed from its current makeup or condition, which is a wooded area. Um, the intent to cut notice, we have 30 days to respond or send it to the DRA. However, uh, I believe Mark and Fred, we and the, the planner, Jason, have all spoken with the company as to the issues with the, with the deed and the conservation easement. I also spoke to them and told them that potentially they could cut on the rest of the land as long as they supply a certify, a survey, a recorded survey, or at least a survey done by a, a surveyor, a licensed surveyor, del delineating the conservation area then we would have to make an inspection on site to confirm that the <coughs> conservation area has been marked, completely marked, and remains in its natural or current condition. Um, I haven't heard back from them yet regarding that, so that is a potential thing they may do. I, was, I also told them that if that is not a choice, <coughs> we would deny this at that time, and they would resubmit a new one once the legal <coughs> issues with the conservation easement were cleared up. And so, uh, Fred, and uh, I have discussed this, and I believe there's a motion that for the board's consideration in this regard. And that was what we just passed out earlier. Um, 
I, I make the motion to deny the intent to cut on the following basis. Do you want me to read it? Sure. Uh, the area to be cut likely includes the tract of land upon which there is a conservation easement upon which a wing of the health care facility is proposed to be built. And this area needs to be flagged as a no-cut zone and documented by a registered land surveyor. The area to be cut is not yet clearly <coughs> flagged and verified. No-cut areas abutting state highways need to be marked. Logging equipment subject to roadway posting should, be, should the roadway be harmed by the operations. Appropriate security has not been posted with DPW for roadway damage protection caused by vehicles and equipment. Wetland areas need to be protected and any required filings for wetlands need to be properly filed and approved with the conservation and or planning if required. So we have a motion. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Bean. Any questions? All's in favor? Unanimous. Uh, Mr. Chairman, did you want to, uh, while Mr. Tinker is here, take up that item under Old Business House Bill 1198? Mm -hmm. Do you want to do that? Is that while he's here? If, uh, if he's got anything to shed the light on that, that would be, I think that's a good time to do it. Um, well, just to let you know that the Senate or the Ways and Means Committee now have the bill. It's tentatively scheduled for hearing on the morning of the 12th. I did receive a call from Senator Stiles' office today. She does want to meet to discuss um, the report that I did for the board uh, a couple of weeks ago and also, you know, discuss HB 1198. Um, her office isn't aware that that meeting is going to happen on the 12th. They, they have no definite. Um, so that, that here, you know, it may not happen on the 12th. It may be pushed out. I'm not really sure. But anyway, on Thursday, I'm going to be meeting with her to go over some information as to handling regarding the polls and conduit. Um, I believe Fred may be able to clarify. I think there was an amendment that may be put forth to extend the life uh, from 40 years back to 50 years, which was their initial presentation to the House. The House wanted to lower it to 30. They compromised to 40, but I believe there's an amendment to push it back to 50 years. The depreciation, though, the, the, the net depreciation of 20% wouldn't change, so it would still not be the greatest thing. It would still, you know, it would, it would push the poles out another 10 years before they're fully depreciated, but, but that <coughs> percentage difference wouldn't be a big gain in the amount of value we lost from the 20% uh, cap. And that's, that's right now all I have for information. Any questions? Let me give you, I did talk <coughs> to Senator Booten, who was the chairman of Senate Ways and Means. Um, we did send the letter that the board directed, and probably a half an hour after he received it, he did call. We had a pleasant conversation. Uh, he did indicate that he was uh, propo proposing an amendment to the current bill, which raises it to 50 years, but leaves everything else the same. So it adds 10 years' worth of depreciation. He also asked that given that um, and the fact that they're trying to extend the life period of the polls, that uh, he asked if the selectmen would be willing to withdraw their letter and send a letter supporting the bill. And I said, I can't answer the question because I'm not a member of the selectmen. I just work for them, and I will be happy to transmit that request. Uh, but I didn't think it was probably going to be granted, but I would be happy to submit it. So do we have a consensus of the board? Uh, if I may, Mr. Chairman, and of course, just so the uh, uh, citizens know what we speak of, uh, 1198 is the uh, utility uh, uh, revenue given away from, from the town of Hampton and other municipalities. Uh, we talked about it last week. Uh, and uh, along with uh, 79A and the uh, pollution control exemptions, uh, this board has taken up upon its uh, responsibilities is to attempt to establish a strategic doctrine to tactically preserve our tax base. We talked over 10 years. This is a $2 million hit with those three legislative pieces alone. They have been voted in uh, or are in the, uh, the final stages of being voted in. Mr. Tinker, uh, with the work of Mr. Welch, has done an outstanding job in extrapolating that uh, tax impact in terms of 
strategic doctrine that the school state school tax will now be, in addition to the $200,000 that we discussed last week, that has now incremented uh, or ex uh, increased another $76,000. So over the next 10 years, this will be uh, close to $300,000. Uh, in response to Mr. Booten, and Mr. Booten is the chair? He's the chair of the committee. Of the Senate, Senate Ways, and Ways and Means Committee that will hear this. This bill is now before his committee. Yes. <clears throat> I would uh, make a motion that we uh, send him this letter that um, further and more correctly identifies um, the loss of tax revenue to the town. And that, of course, was mailed to the board by Mr. Tinker. Okay, we can send that. That's, I think that's consensus. Send that. uh, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with I agree with uh, Selectman Bean and what he's saying, and with Ed and Mark. And I think I think it's good. I think we're staying proactive on this, and I think we're staying on top of it. And I think as long as we're staying in a, in a, in a working relationship with the Senate, with the with the committees up there, and not being um, overly uh, aggressive. Uh, well, not overly aggressive, but overly negative. I mean, as long as we stay in the, in the aspect that these are the facts, this is what we're doing, yeah. and this is where we're coming from, and that we're willing to work and, and listen and try and work this out somehow, I think that's a good thing. So I, I agree 100%, and I, I don't think, yeah. So I think we, we, we send this letter that was uh, formulated by Happy to. Mr. Tinker, and uh, I don't think we have any interest in rescinding our other letter. That's Thank you, Mr. Good. Chairman. And I think, you know, what, what Sleckman Bean said, Mr. Ed, uh, that the public knows that that not only is 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 Hampton losing money, but the school tax also, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, every ten million every, dollars every, worth yeah. in ten years. Right. I mean, so so it's it, it, it's a tax. It's a loss of tax revenue that's going to dramatically affect not only the town but affect the, the schools also. So we have to stay on top of it. Well, I did see Senator Stiles Saturday evening, and she uh, she said she was uh, anxiously awaiting your your conversation. Excuse me, that's 18 million point six uh, that would be lost in school tax, not 10. Okay. Anything else? That'll do it. Thank you, Mr. Tinker. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Mark. The Thank next you. one is the approval of the minutes of March 21st. So moved. So moved by Mr. Griffin. Mr. Griffin, seconded by Mr. Bean. All those in favor? Unanimous. Town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, the filing period for veterans, elderly, and blind exemptions and for the Hampton Beach Precinct reduced tax rate ends on April 15th. P please be sure to visit the assessor's office for all necessary forms. <coughs> Excuse me. April 15th is also the last day to file for current use taxation with the assessor's office. All charitable, religious, and educational organizations must file their annual list of exempt property with the assessor's office by April 15th, by statute. Please see the town clerk's office for your annual dog license. Um, all current licenses expire on April 30th. The New Hampshire Municipal Association legislative bulletin will be available on the town's website as it is issued each week. That's usually sometime late Friday. Uh, please review as many of the items listed for action by the State Senate and House of Representatives may include expenses that may affect your property tax tax bill negatively. So it pays to review some of these. You can also go to the State of uh, New Hampshire legislative website for the House and Senate, and there are usually detailed explanations of material that's there. Uh, the Department of Public Works will be conducting a town-wide uh, yard waste pickup April 25th to April 28th. Next to Fred. Do not place branches out uh, with, along with your material. This is strictly clippings, leaves, etc. Um, uh, they'll be they will uh, branches will not be picked up. Please pr please bring your branches and, and other wood waste to the transfer station. Mr. Chairman, I also have a notice here that was received late this afternoon from the police department. They are going to be doing mandatory state-required training for their police officers in weapons training. And that's going to take place uh, according to what they have here on their list on April 9th uh, from 0900 to 1900 hours, April 13th to 16th, uh, the same time periods, April 23rd and April 30th, the same time periods. Those trainings are required for our police officers by state law. 
So those are those. That's an important item to uh, to keep in consideration. If you hear uh, unusual noise, uh, I'm afraid it's going to be our police officers' uh, training. The other thing I have, Mr. Chairman, is late this afternoon we had a uh, uh, a raffle permit brought in for the Acorn School. Uh, they're going to be conducting a raffle at the community oven on Lafayette Road. Uh, this is for the Becky Shepherd Scholarship Fund, and they're going to be conducting it later tonight. So uh, they would like to have that approved if, that, if that's possible. So I'll make a motion we approve it. Motion to approve it. Second it. Second it. Fiend, all those in favor? Unanimous. That should do it, Mr. Chairman. Okay, any questions Thanks. for the town manager? <coughs> Regina? Okay. Oh, I'm all set, thanks. Jim? Uh, Fred, I'm sure that, we, that, that, you know, just for the public's uh, sir, knowledge, that we're still progressing on the sewer pipe and all that. I mean, I, I know that we it's are. just, might just, an overview of what, what's happening, even though it's it might be redundant, but just so the public knows, it's not something that's being dropped. They are out working with engineers to determine the actual cost of replacement and frequency that, of time period that needs to take place. Um, we're estimating that we will not have the complete information until about the 1st of September. So uh, without that, of course, we can't determine the exact cost or the exact estimated cost. Um, and we will also be able to determine uh, what the bond would cost if we were to move forward with a bond. Uh, because the, the uh, municipal bond bank is uh, going out to bid in June, so those prices would hold for about six months. So we'd use those prices as a guess. Obviously, when you float the bond, you have to wait to get the actual figure, but I, those, we're usually pretty close with those figures. So, uh, so we don't anticipate that we're going to have anything for the board in real figures. Uh, we do have drafted warrant articles with no figures in them yet, um, and they're working on those now. We, we will have an in-house estimate of those costs soon, probably in the next five or ten days. So you'll be able to get a good look at what, what those actual costs should be from an estimated standpoint uh, without without the uh, the debt service, of course. Uh, it looks like uh, we're talking somewhere around $5 million. So that's a guess at the moment. So, okay. And a town me a special meeting would be probably, I mean, speculating uh, the special meeting, if we were to finish uh, all the material we need and have that available by the 1st of September, then uh, we would petition the Superior Court, Mark Wood. Uh, the Superior Court would hold a hearing to determine whether or not there is an emergency that has arisen in the town. If it determines that there is, then they will uh, grant the petition for a special town meeting so we can go ahead and vote uh, to raise an appropriate money which can't be done without, well, it can be done without their vote, but it's almost impossible, um, the way the system is set up in the statutes. Uh, that would re require us to go into a situation of where we have almost a repeat of the annual town meeting sequencing. It'll be shorter in duration, but we'll still have to go through all those steps in a shortened format. Okay, so are the boards that would be involved? Uh, there's the Board of Selectmen, and yeah. there is the Budget Committee. Okay. So both of those would be involved in, in approving Mark going up to the court, or? Well, no, the selectman would be involved in approving Mark to go to the court. Um, and you have to make that determination as to whether or not you wish to have a special meeting. Once that takes place, then we go into the regular budget schedule. Okay. And the budget committee comes in and, and, and reviews that information at a public hearing. They hold a public hearing, there will be a deliberative session, and there will be a, uh, a town meeting vote. Okay. Good. You know, one other question? Sir, grist mill. Where, where are we? Uh, we're not gristing yet, but okay. uh, <laughs> the state is coming to inspect next week. Uh, they have told us that they would like to uh, make sure that when we put our contract information out, we're doing uh, initial information now for the contracts. Uh, when we put that out, that it meets all of their expectations, so there, there won't be any questions on either side what needs to be done. Uh, and I know that Public Works is now working on that information. Um, preliminarily, because we haven't really met with them on the site yet, but we will do that next week. Uh, and I believe that's April, excuse me, April 6th. That's this week. Um, they'll be doing that on April 6th, and, and uh, the state will issue their report shortly thereafter. Uh, we will be issuing 
contracts shortly thereafter for for whatever work is necessary. Thank you. Any else? Any other questions for yeah, the uh, uh, for what's on your report, sir? Um, I would like to, you mentioned about the depot book. <clears throat> Department of Public Works will be conducting a townwide yard waste pickup. Exactly what was that for the yard waste? Uh, that was leaves, clippings, things of that nature, but no wood. Mm -hmm. No branches or other material like that. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, negative, sir. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. My dog appreciates the reminder. But then I'll get to get him to do it. Oh, well. <laughs> I have to tell you, the warrant's already drafted for June, so <laughs> it's already in the Take document. Away. <laughs> uh, old business, we've already talked about HB 1198. Is there any other old business? Yeah, I'd like to know what happens if, when they do vote for uh, a, uh, whether there should be a general, uh, <coughs> you know, a special town meeting, mm -hmm. what would, um, what happens if they vote no? then we are prohibited from doing anything until another town meeting changes that. And this is the situation we find ourselves in is that we, we have uh, discovered that at one of the joints in that line going out across the, the marsh, uh, there was some stones placed underneath it that were maybe the closest stones to the, to the, uh, the pumping system which caused vibrations which tore a hole right through the pipe. There are 200 other splices in that pipe that could have been braced by that material. We don't know. Without digging the entire pipe up, which would be as much as replacing it, um, we, we just have no way of knowing if that occurred. But the chances are it probably did. We just don't know if they're wearing a hole through <clears throat> at this point. Why would you say that the, the chances are they probably did? Were the people, the, supposedly the people that put the pipe in were there. Did they recommend that at the whole pipe be replaced? No. No. We don't know that the whole pipe <clears throat> should be replaced. What you're doing is you're, you're just taking the chance. Human nature says that if you, uh, because you're working in a marsh which is boggy anyhow, uh, it, it appeared that what they had done is they had stuffed some rocks, heavy rocks, granite rocks, underneath the pipe to stabilize it. That's what caused the hole to bore. Uh, once you've done something like that, even if it wasn't in the specifications, with it, which it wasn't, uh, the chances are if they had the same situation someplace else along the pipe, probably did the same thing. Uh, and you've got 200 potential spots where that could have happened. But, you know, I'm just bringing out the point, they might not have done that either. They might I mean, not have. What's happening with, the, uh, with them possibly being at fault and having something that might be happening in the future. We're, Maybe the town attorney can adjust that? Yeah, we're still looking <clears> at the, <throat> analyzing the facts to that, uh, trying to locate the original contract and any specifications that were there. In other words, it may make a difference as to whether there were specifications that called for those rocks, to, some kind of rocks to be put. And as you know, in some of these contracts, there are very specific um, specifications that the materials are supposed to meet. Obviously, that tooth that you saw uh, would not be one of them. Mm -hmm. And what about, did the state recommend that there be a town meeting? The state hasn't recommended anything yet. They're, they're not involved in this at this point. Um, the EPA and the state have accepted our filed reports. Um, we've turned the system back on. We didn't <coughs> need state permission to do that, but we've done it. Uh, and we did advise them we, we were doing it, and they thanked us for giving them the advice that we were, in fact, proceeding forward to, to use that line slowly and gradually as, until pressure builds up in it. Uh, obviously, there's air in it that needs to be pled. Uh, so we're back in service, and hopefully we're going to stay in service uh, because we don't want another, another problem with the line, that's for sure. One of the problems we have is we can't clean it. We don't happen to have a 4,000-foot vacuum cleaner, which is, which is what it's going to take. Um, the line is not level. It, in fact, dips and rises and, and falls as it goes across the marsh. And it appears that uh, a sizable amount of material in the form of small stones were taken into the pipe system, which has caused a lower 
25% of the pipe to fill with stone and with um, basically muck uh, from, the, from the material being pumped over. Uh, and it's very, it's like cement. It's very hard. Um, if we were to clean the pipe in order to inspect the inside, in order to photograph it or, or videotape it, uh, it would just be impossible because of the, the contours up and down going across. We might push all the material into one area and, and not be able to get by that area and completely shut the pipe off. Um, not knowing where that was, uh, we have to dig most of the pipe up to figure out where everything was um, without having some sort of a vacuum involved in it. And uh, because the pipe is not level, we can't shoot a line through it and draw something through to, to clean it. So we're, we're sort of at the mercy of not knowing what's there. Mm -hmm. And we're concerned about that because we just don't know if something else stupid happened and that shouldn't have happened. And, and uh, so we're, we're preparing for the absolute worst now. It may be that you go to the annual meeting with us. I just don't know. Yeah, that, I mean, that's, I, I think it's obvious that it needs to be done, but whether there needs to be a, a, a town meeting, I question that. And, um, I mean, it's only a matter of months difference. And, you know, I know that the DPW director uh, brought it up that, um, about how that we could possibly be fined. I'd like to know, do you know how many other towns have been fined by the state? Well, I am not aware of any other that any other town that has this same arrangement of these pipes going under the marsh, and uh, I'm not aware of any others that have been fined for this same reason. Certainly, there have been spills in other places. And you're not aware of any people getting fined. I can't imagine the state fining uh, a, a, a group or a municipality when it's always such an effort to raise this money, and. Not only that, Hampton has such a perfect record of doing everything that the state would want them to. There was, there was a uh, series of requests that were <clears throat> for information about what we knew and when we knew it, basically, that was answered in timely fashion. I believe it was by March 18th, Fred, was yes. the date. And um, we've not heard anything back from them at that point. Would it, would it be the state that finds them or the EPA? Uh, could be either one, actually, but uh, more likely would be, um, I would think, be the state. You know, I just wonder if there might be uh, more financial responsibility to do this pipe, you know, and at the same time be planning on doing the pipe that's through the center of town, um, where I know that during this special meeting we can't be asking to raise any money for the special pipe that's in the middle of town. Actually, you could. You could? Yes. You could. I thought it had to be just on this one no, issue that was an emergency. When we had the plug on that particular pipe and it overflowed in the street. Um, That's considered an emergency also? Uh, well, what was considered the emergency was that we went to clean the pipe. And as you know, we have a, a, a specially equipped truck with a, with a nozzle on the end of it, on the end of a, a large hose that goes in and scours the inside of the pipe, uh, kind of like a giant rotor rooter where they use water. They couldn't use it uh, with any force because part of the top of the pipe is missing. And if they did, they might crush the pipe. It might, it might in fact, implode and bring the street in with it. So they had to be very careful about how they cleaned it. Most of it was done with shovels and hand by hand. And we got it clean so that it works fine at this point. Um, but it is a problem. And there are sections of the pipe that are the top piece where the crown is that are, that are missing and badly cracked. In some areas so there's the potential for that to collapse over a period of time and they've been watching it we've known the town apparently has known about it since 1989 uh, but no one's ever brought it forward till now uh, for I haven't heard about it till now um, that the, that the condition of the pipe so we need to look at that for replacement as well uh, we could ask the court to do it uh, the court may in getting a special town meeting petition granted, they may restrict you to a certain thing and nothing else, or they may just say, yes, you have permission to hold a meeting, go ahead and open the warrant, in which case everything goes. Um, we wouldn't be too happy with that idea. Well, we've known for a long time about the uh, pipe that's through the middle of town, that it was a problem. 
we we've known it's a problem, but we don't we didn't I don't think we knew how much of a problem it is. Yeah, because so it got brought up plug. quite a bit when we were talking about doing over the corner where the alley hatch is, and that was one of the advantages to do the corner over that no one wanted to do over. Well, and this now it turns out the pipe is much the damaged area is much longer than anybody thought. So yeah, which That's, which is unfortunate, but yeah. we will have to fit. We would normally be able to line that mm -hmm. so that we wouldn't have to dig it up. But because there are pieces of the pipe missing, there's, there's cracked areas and there's pieces of, that have fallen out, uh, it's not possible to line it because there's nothing to adhere the liner to. So it, wouldn't, it wouldn't work. So could, could, could conceivably both projects be done under the same bond? They could. Yeah. If the town were to vote it, they could. And would there be any money savings in doing it that way? Probably, because you're going to hire a, a contractor, a series of contractors that would Actually, this is a fairly large job. Um, and then you've got the street to think about because the water company wants to dig up the other side of the street. <coughs> and that, that, of course, is going to be a problem as well because they want to move their water main to the opposite side. So that will require some excavation as well. So. That's why, for me, to just to save a couple of months, I'd rather take the time and do both projects at the same time yep. and um, be able to sell it to the public how important it is and I think with being able to display how we were able to save money by doing them at the same time I just think it's a win-win all the way around and we're looking at it from that standpoint if we can our biggest problem is can we make it through the summer uh, without a problem because we we just can't have one that's just not a, not allowed um, if we had a problem with a line crossing the marsh in the summertime, we don't have the capacity to pump the waste away that comes to the beach without using both lines fully. So uh, we're planning on one, neither one of them failing. We're going to use them both, and we're going to use them through the summer. Uh, even if we wanted to go earlier, we can't go until after Labor Day anyhow. Mm -hmm. So it may just wait until the annual town meeting. We'll see what the figures come in, the engineering reports come in, see what's actually there, and then we'll, the board can make a determination based upon the information as to whether or not they wish to move forward now or they miss, wish to move forward at the annual meeting. Well, I think we have a lot to look at it because it's very obvious that there are no facts in right now. That's correct. We're waiting for those. Thank you. I Just, just quickly on, on the fine thing, didn't the DPW say, director say that we most likely would not be fine this time, but if it happened again, we were well we were aware of the fact that it could happen, and that could be stated that's as why being asked, negligent. Yeah. That's why I asked that question. I don't. Right. I, yeah. I don't think you'll find that they have given fines out like that. No, no, no. That's but, exactly. But I, they have in other. I mean, I've read of, in well, other which cities ones, and which ones have? States. That's what I want to know. That's exactly yeah. why I asked the question. I don't think there are any. Yeah, but well, you read about it all the time in the newspapers about well, people. Where yeah. are they? That's not, what I want to know. We're not anticipating the town is going to get fined over this episode. Yeah, the, I understand that, but I mean, I don't think that they're dishing out fines for other, even other towns, and Hampton certainly has cooperated. It's been in rare every in way. New Hampshire, very rare. Yes. <coughs> okay, anything else under old business? Yes, uh, Quarian, the... I had, I actually wrote a letter. I wanted to try to go to the meeting this week, but I can't get out of work, so I wrote a letter addressing, uh, I guess as a sort of a, as a responding to some of their responses uh, just didn't seem like we got really the information we were looking for and now the meeting is this week so unfortunately since I can't go I wrote this letter in lieu of uh, my attendance so should I read through it or um, do you I think you've given a summary of what it is it's your response if you feel like you want to read it go ahead yeah I mean it's just like the request in the first one, uh, for example, they want to, their budgeted amount for postage and bill processing is going to nearly double from 38000 to 85000 but it's not clarified to what that, those amounts actually consist of. And they work as a subsidiary, which is New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. And so I just want to know what percentage of uh, the subsidiary share are these costs are going to be paid by New Hampshire, which is in essence Hampton, Northampton, and Rye Water District. And they sent two, two spreadsheets full of information, but I mean, <coughs> I sat there for a while and I couldn't figure out where they came up with the calculations for the total average days 
and also the uh, capital percentages, which fluctuate quite heavily. Uh, one goes down by 113 basis points, and then the other one goes up by 8.83 basis points. So I just thought maybe they could uh, provide some documentation on their calculation for us to actually look at that, where those numbers came from. And then the question which this was brought up at the February 22nd meeting, whether or not that 23000 is just, we're just going to keep seeing that, I believe, probably is a recurring expense. And I just sort of want them to clarify that. They're almost saying it, but they're not quite sure. They're saying they're not quite sure, but to me it looks like after 2018, so we pay the 69000 and then 2018, it, to me it seems like they're saying that's going to be embedded into their revenue requirement. Therefore, it's going to be a new tax that we have to pay. And how do they expect to actually save going from a quarterly to a monthly billing cycle? Because to me, that just seems like they're going to have more costs, as they sort of demonstrated in response one. And then their you know, consistency with Aquarian's operations in Connecticut and Massachusetts doesn't reflect what we need here in Hampton. And uh, if you look, both the states themselves of Connecticut and Massachusetts are bankrupt. New Hampshire is not. So. We, we don't want to be compared to those two states, in my mind. And that's it. So, some things I would have liked to ask in person, but I can't, so I put in a letter. Very good. This, uh, this, this session, just so uh, we the public knows, Mr. Chairman, is at the Public Utilities Commission on South Fruit Street in Concord on April, Thursday, April 7th at uh, 1.30. And it is styled as a pre-hearing conference for statements of position followed right thereafter by by a technical session where these very questions that uh, Selectman Barnes is raising uh, should be answered. And so it's perfect that this, this type of letter is, is sent. I can tell you, Mr. Chairman, I, I talked to the finance director today and she was provided with the information that came from uh, Aquarian and uh, she's unable to determine how they reached their conclusions because the information is so incomplete that there's no essential working document to, to refer to, to to calculate, to figure out how they calculated it. So I think, you know, we're just, they're just playing games. We're going around in circles on this one. And they need to just come up and tell us how it was done so that we can understand it. Jim. So on the 7th, will, will they take Regina's letter and will they, they, they should respond to it? They should. And uh, we will uh, we'll make sure it gets to be part of the record okay. in her absence. And will you get a chance to speak, to ask questions? Yes. And and Fred will be there uh, also. Okay. That that's what I was going to ask was if she was going if you were if she needed to put that she wanted this to be part of the record. Well, uh, it, having gone to this uh, trouble to do that, uh, we will certainly make it part. And you'll see it's addressed to the executive director of the mm -hmm. Public Utilities Commission. Yeah. And thank you very much, Regina, for uh, for doing this. This is wonderful. Oh, and I actually spoke to Helena too, and she, I think that's how you say her yeah. name. Yeah, Mrs. Barthel. Mrs. Barthel. Yeah, I yeah. spoke to her this morning, and she's happy to be going and doing <coughs> this. And she thinks that you know she's been in the business for a long time, and she just thinks that they're giving us what they want to give us, and they're not giving us the whole story. So I totally feel to that that's the way it is. Try to get some answers out of them. So. And, and as we saw, the initial figure they said that would be the uh, the amount they wanted deferred of their loss of working capital of 23169 is actually should be multiplied by three before they in, include it in the rate case, the next rate case. So it is closer to $70,000. And they say that this is either going to be embedded in the company's revenue requirement or incorporated as an amortization expense as part of the rates in the next rate proceeding, which is a nice way of saying, or a not nice way of saying, we're going to pay for it for a long time. Forever. And I just saw that they, uh, the parent company of Aquarian Water bought two uh, companies, I can't remember where they were, but they were somewhere else, somewhere in the world, for outlandish, obscene amounts of money in cash. So they're just raking in the money from poor people in Hampton and that's about as succinct as you can get because that's exactly what they're doing. The money's it's leaving the here and this going there. For doing this. Yeah. I do note that uh, where their headquarters is, is located in Hingham, Massachusetts. 
the, the regional headquarters for New Hampshire and Massachusetts, and the town of Hingham is moving to, to, uh, to unseat them and take over the water department and boot them out of town. And their parent companies in Australia. Yeah, and that's where most of our money's going is Australia. It's, it's not staying here at all. Jim? Again, Regina, thanks for doing this, and Mark and Fred, you know, for staying proactive on this rather than just allowing Aquarium to come in and say, but if we're doing and taking it, it's a good job. Good job. The concern that the state is just <coughs> allowing them to do that. It's, a, it's distressing. Phil? Uh, yeah, the uh, president of Aquarian and I spoke a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I had requested that he call. He did call. Um, had a very nice conversation. Fred and I have been up to uh, testify before, and um, some of us were allowed to testify somewhere, but he did uh, agree, and you can perhaps load yourself with this uh, ammunition when you go there, is that uh, he disagreed with that notion, so perhaps you can pave the way, Esquire, um, that uh, the president of the company uh, has uh, thought that it was not a square deal, that those that represent Hampton, including Regina's lovely uh, uh, data-filled requests, uh, are heard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Nothing else under old business. Any new business? Motion to adjourn at 1951. Oh, any closing comments? I'll accept your motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Thank you very much. <laughs>